On this day, 46 years ago, a tank drove over the gates at the Polytechnic School of Athens in my home country, Greece. This is one of the most significant days in the modern history of Greece. And here's why. On the 21st of April in 1967, several colonels from the Greek army gathered together and decided that the left and center forces in Greece were getting out of hand. They took matters into their own hands and just like that, overnight, they overthrew the Greek government. The seven following years are known as the Greek junta, which is the dictatorship, one of the darkest times in the Greek history. Whoever did not agree with them was either tortured or killed. Political conversations of any kind were banned, as was communism. Whoever was a communist or had ties to communists was exiled to remote islands designated by the regime. It's not an exaggeration to say that approximately half of the population in Greece, of my generation at least, has someone in their family who was exiled, tortured, or worse. Two out of the three brothers that my grandma had were in exile for some time. One of them, who was living with my grandma and my grandpa till the end of his days, they were taking care of him, couldn't walk very well. His name was Nikos, and he had been tortured so severely, especially at the bottom of the feet, where they would hit them with damp pieces of wood, from what I hear, that his limping was very obvious. A friend of his visited once, and he came into our house, and I could see that his fingers were all broken up. They were twisted to the sides. When I asked why did they do that to him, they told me that this guy was a painter. So they crippled his very instrument. Needless to say, these men's resolve was so great that the guy kept on painting regardless. His name was Georgios Farsakidis. Meanwhile, the younger generation at the time, who are now my parents' generation, at 65 years old, they were getting restless. Under the far-right regime, they were becoming more and more leftist. Being a communist was in, it was hip for them. The Greek junta was trying to avoid a communist onslaught. Instead, they made martyrs out of communist kids. Especially with that tank. In the few days prior to the 17th of November, the students were flooding in the universities. The law school was under occupation by students. And so was the Polytechnic School of Athens, Greece. The students at the Polytechnic School, also known as the Engineering School, created a radio station from where they broadcast their messages to all of Greece. Their message was simple. Somi, pedia, eleftheria. Bread, education, freedom. Basic human needs. people started flooding outside the university in total support of the students. The uprising was at hand. The regime saw the danger and they tried to suppress the resistance. The police and the army was sent to the university with several tanks standing outside the gates, threatening the students, asking them to come out. On the 17th of November, during the night, one of the tanks walked, drove, over the gates into the university. The fake government had managed to thwart the student threat. 
But their fire had been set. The spark that these students had set, the events that they set in motion, would inspire people in the months to come, and indeed forever. Forty-six years later, the feelings for that dictatorship seem to be fading for many of us. Some people even miss those days, thinking that we were better off with someone telling us what to think and what to do. Maybe they are the offsprings of people who worked with the dictatorship, or maybe they have too much hate in them. Forty-six years later, again on the 17th of November, we have a curfew, and we cannot gather outside in groups of more than three. Every year, for 46 years, this day has been a celebration for so many people. Kids at school remember the tanks and the students, and we have little gatherings where we discuss what was happening back in the day. Far-left groups would go to the Polytechnic School and burn it down year after year, trying to feel free, trying to remember what the students felt like. Not that burning down is good. And the police would chase them, and it was all a bit of a... How should I say it? It felt like images out of a graphic novel. The anarchists run, and the police is chasing them. This year, none of that can happen. Or at least, none of that is allowed to happen. It might happen during the night. I don't know. Maybe harsher than ever. But some people find it very eerie and similar to that regime that we are now in lockdown. It is really important to remember that what is happening in the world today, with the pandemic and all, is very different to what was happening to the world back then. But especially on this day, it is also really difficult not to make the comparison in our heads that we were in lockdown back then, and we are in lockdown now. Let's hope that politics and medicine are completely separate things. Why did I want to make this video? I was telling my daughters about these events, about the tank, about the bombs, about the exile. My four-year-old told me, Daddy, I know of a queen who can jump on bombs, and with her fists, she can destroy the tanks. And I think it's really important that we do not forget. That's it. See you guys in the next video. Till next time, be kind.